It's in a giant pelican case. What could it be? Oh, oh that's freaking heavy. Alright, welcome back to Gun Store Vlogs. This is Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports and CheapGunsUSA.com in Westfield, Indiana. Let's go ahead and get started with the day. I do have a really cool rifle I want to show you guys, so let's jump into it. Alright, check this out. I just got this in. This is... I like to have a little bit for everyone here on the vlogs and in the store. For those of you who do not know, this is a model 1886. This particular one was made in the 1890s. I believe it was 1893. I had it written down. But there are no cracks or anything. There's just some nice honest wear, some scuff marks and stuff. And then you can sort of see the original case hardening left there. Beautiful rifle. Man, I love these things. Check that out. Just lots of character all the way around. If you guys like this type of old stuff, I do carry a lot of, I do get a lot of this kind of stuff in here. Uh, but these are just so cool. Uh, anyway, let's keep moving on with the day. Okay, got in another shipment of surplus stuff, so I'm gonna open this up and show you what we got. I'll pull a couple out and show you, then I'll unbox it off camera and um, bring it in for you guys to see kind of everything. But I've got a kind of a cool variety of stuff. And we just started stocking um, surplus firearms in here about a couple weeks ago. It's been very popular and um, I'm going to start the process of getting some of this stuff online on cheapgunsusa.com. So you guys can go check it out there if you're not from this area. But anyway, let's jump on in. Okay. We've got these CZ 82. These are 380s. Uh, really, really nice. Good condition. Um, so I'm going to have those. I got several of those guys. So see if we can find something else in here. Now I did get these Manurin PP police pistols, French. <laughs> Merci beaucoup, <laughs> really, really nice condition. Um, I got about five of these so um, whatever I have left over the weekend I will again try and put up on our page so you guys can check those out. Got these little uh, VZ 70s, CZ 70s, 32 ACP, they're pretty much somewhat of a copy, very very similar to a PP but a little bit larger. Almost what this reminds me of is one of those big CZ 52s and 7.62x25 that's just been scaled down to 32 auto really cool kind of classic Cold War era Czechoslovakian pistol. These are these are cool. I'm probably going to grab one of these for myself. Got another one right here. Uh, I've got them in kind of varying conditions so I'm going to list them up on our uh, Marksman Shooting Sports Facebook page. Uh, sort of the different conditions and prices. Uh, we also have our uh, Marksman TV page. It's a separate for our YouTube. Uh, but anyway like I said um, I'm going to try and start sort of listing these just kind of getting new to surplus, but like the people here locally love it. So try and get them up on our CheapGunsUSA.com page. Okay guys, check this out. This is all these surplus pistols. Again, just a little bit of everything. Those VZ70s or CZ70s. Um, little uh, CZ82s, these are in 380. Uh, really, really, really nice condition. But what else? And then the little Manurin. PP pistols. It's excellent shape. But anyway, like I said, we're we're kind of getting into this stuff. Let you look at that again. Got a couple tags on some of them. But look up here. There's all my boxes. <laughs> this is sort of our surplus case, and we just have a. We'll let this focus here. Here we go. We just have a difficult time keeping. There's a bunch of Berettas. That's we've sold like 15 to 20 of them in a week or two. We had uh, seven or eight of these Polish P64s, and I just got one left. I had this whole entire bottom lined with Star BMs. They're all gone. And then Tokarevs. I had six, I think, and we've sold three of them. So those are going a little bit slower, but really, really cool. Uh, anyway, it's exciting because I love surplus stuff. Yeah use guns right now. Again, we just, they they go quickly. 
there's the um, <laughs> some of our old uh, a couple old Winchesters and uh, that you've seen and then uh, the uh, M1s up there but not much has changed since our last vlog in terms of inventory other than we just have a few uh, a couple less things in stock but anyway let's uh, there's more of those boxes and um, I'm gonna get these things tagged and uh, we'll kind of move on from there that'll be the next hour of my day okay so UPS just came there is a really cool gun in here I've been waiting to get in and get on display here in the store. So I'm going to get this thing out of the box and show you what it is. Two hours later. And now we're at box number two. I hope you can feel the tension. I know I do. It's in a giant Pelican case. What could it be? Oh, oh that's freaking heavy. Okay, I moved it to the back table because I didn't want to destroy the glass. But let's jump in here and see what's in the box. Oh boy. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a Barrett M82A1 with a Night Force scope on it. 50 BMG, of course. That thing is freaking cool. <laughs> let me pull the camera off here and let you take a look. Okay, there is our. Sorry about the paper there. There is our artillery piece, 50 BMG of course. Very cool, there's that iconic muzzle brake. This is how it comes in the box. Never handled one of these before, so I'm gonna get it out here, assemble it, and then I'll turn the camera back on for you guys. Okay, I thought you guys might get a kick out of uh, the assembly on this. So, I've never done this before. I've watched a couple tutorials. Uh, take out the cross pin there, pull the bolt back a little bit and remove that there, let the bolt come and sit home. I'm gonna go grab the barrel. So here is our barrel assembly, which I understand, if I can give myself some space here, and bring the barrel out all the way. And then there is a little notch on the barrel. We'll move this buffer thing back here. And we'll bring our springs. I know you can't see this too well, but I'll do a video on this. Oh, that's tight. I'll do a video on this. I wish I could set it up on end, but I've got this scope here. Let's see if I can do it this way. Okay, there. That'll probably be better. I'll do a video on this so I completely go through it. There we go show you guys all the inner workings so then we will just lower the top on this little hinge point up at the front bring this back to me here and then bring the bolt back slightly allowing the top to come down whoop under the bottom Allow the bolt to go back forward and then be able to pop these guys back in. Very cool. Let me go get the magazine. There we go. Okay. There's a learning curve. This thing is insanely heavy. <laughs> there you go. I think they're about 35 pounds-ish. But I had a German MG34 at one point in time. There's videos of it. And this feels about the same weight. So that's pretty crazy. Very cool though. Okay guys, something else I get asked about a lot in here is about the background check. So uh, for our Q&A segment for this vlog, I'm going to quickly go over this. So in most, well, in all gun stores, um, or if you're a gun dealer at a gun show or anything like this, if you sell a firearm, you have to submit a background check on that purchase. Um, some dealers do this electronically, some dealers do it with paper documents. Uh, so that will vary where you go. We have our customers fill out the paper document, but then we transcribe that over into the computer system. So we kind of do a hybrid of both, just for record keeping purposes. Um, and basically what you will have to do is on this form, if you filled it out, you already know what it is, but you fill out a list of uh, kind of personal information, your name, your address, social security number if you want to leave that information, date of birth, and then you answer a, a series of questions and we usually call those disqualifiers. For example, are you, have you been convicted of a felony, uh, domestic violence, uh, misdemeanor, dishonorably discharged from the military, addicted to you know, drugs or any other controlled substances, you know, you know, there's about 10 or so qualifiers. 
Now when that's completed, we transcribe that over to the system, Nick's system, uh, the FBI system, and whether that's if we call it in or do it on the computer. And what essentially is happening is the process that's happening there is there is an actual database, the FBI criminal database, that that information is run against electronically. And typically, if there's no red flags or anything like that, the status will come right back, the customer will get a proceed, and then they can go ahead and take their firearm home. Or if you live in a state where there's a waiting period, you might have to wait a few days. Here in Indiana, we don't have a waiting period, so if Nix gives you a proceed, you go ahead and take it home. Now, this leads us to the biggest question is, is delays and denies, especially delays. So we get delays pretty frequently. It's just a normal part of the business. And nine times out of 10, especially people who are new to gun buying, freak out when they hear they're delayed. They start, I call it kind of the bargaining, or not bargaining, explaining this is, well, I'm not a felon, blah, blah, blah. And I say, you know, don't worry about it. And this is why I'm doing this, because this just happened a lot last week. What it basically means is that information is run electronically against a system. If there are too many red flags, the system will flag you and say, hey, I need a human being to come over and make sure that this person is not the same one that's causing this, this flag or this hold up here. And that's why typically if somebody has a very common name, Smith, Jones, or Wilson, or anything like that, um, I, I can almost guarantee that just if I see the name Smith, for example, uh, nine times out of ten, I go ahead and assume that they're going to go ahead and get a you know further review and then a delay. Further review on our end, that's just the examiner if we're on the phone or the or the computer system is just saying, uh, hey, there was a flag. We need to send this over to a lead examiner to have them look it over and make sure again that this person is not a disqualified person for owning a firearm. Uh, and then, you know, that takes time. Now, once you go to further review, you do have to have a human being over at the NICS systems, usually a lead, or, or uh, I think they call them lead, lead examiners. They need to actually come over and investigate your file. And if it's like a busy Saturday or it's a holiday season, and again, keep in mind, they have a limited staff of people and there's this big pile up of further reviews that they can't get to, they are inevitably going to delay you. Now, in the United States, a delay, they have up to three business days, not including the date of transfer or the date of paperwork submission. That does also not include holidays or weekend, I believe Sundays. Um, so typically, you're looking at five whole days turnaround, six whole days turnaround if there's a weekend or a holiday in there, that they have to until they legally have to let you take the firearm. What that typically means to us is they move your status to open at that point in time. It basically means that they haven't found the they haven't found a status on you, but legally they're allowing the dealer to go ahead and, and sell it. You know, legally they have to, so they can't tie up your firearms for months on end. I wish the NFA would do that. But at that point in time, it is the discretion of the dealer whether they want to go ahead and transfer the ownership of the firearm to you. Now, after your status goes to open, that that form will stay open with NICS for about a month, I believe it's 30 days, in which they can continue to find a status. Now, if your status moves to open, the dealer sells you the firearm, and then within those 30 days, an examiner gets to the file, finds out that you are a restricted person and you're denied, then the dealer will contact you or NICS or the ATF will contact you and you'll have to return the firearm immediately or they will come and pay you a visit and confiscate it, for it from you. But that is a very, very rare scenario. Um, Typically here, I find 20, 24 to 48 hours, they will come back with a status. Typically, it doesn't go the entire three to five days or whatever, um, but that's just basically how it works. Now, if you are denied, and I have had customers who, are, who have been denied who go through the appeals process and have gotten that overturned, it is a possibility you can get denied. Your dealer has no idea why you were denied. That is protected and private information that they cannot share with a firearms dealer like myself. They just tell us that you got denied and that's it. So um, again, if you get a denied, don't argue with your dealer. Don't say, well, what, what did it say? What did they say about me? You know, blah, blah, blah. They don't know, you know, and that's the answers. I have no idea. All they've told me is not to sell you a gun and that is all I know. So basically, that is a gist. That's a little bit of behind the scenes, and hopefully, if you guys have ever wondered, that's basically how it works. So uh, again, that's kind of the end of the day. I'm about to close up here, guys. So thank you so much for stopping by for this firearms vlog. I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports and CheapGunsUSA.com in Westfield, Indiana. You're watching Marksman TV. I will see you next time.